Let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the community, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Good morning. The following are the webinar rules. First, rename your Zoom name to your complete name, your strand, and section. Next, mute your microphone when not in use. Also, switch on your video if your connectivity allows you.
in this session, there are open forum. Please ask questions if you have questions regarding the discussion. All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning, students. Good morning, co-facilitators, and welcome to Empowerment Technology Big Class or Lecture for Mojo One. I am Mr. John Synth Palama. I will be your facilitator for Mojo One. And with me this morning, class, is Mrs. Oriel Lisa Maipa and Mr. Jade Montemayor. So each of us has specific topic to be um, delivered and discussed whole throughout the semester. But for today, I will be giving a discussion or a lecture on module one. For module two on applied productivity tools and collaborative development that will be delivered by our second facilitator, Mrs. Oriel Lisa Maipa. And for the third module, which is on safety, security, and ethics, and online research that will be um, again delivered by Mr. Jade Montemayor. And take note that we are on uh, live in YouTube. So for those who are um, in YouTube, you can actually participate there through commenting um in the comment box Okay, so before I'll start uh, my discussion on introduction and communication technology, um, I just like to remind everybody that our discussion will just only last until 1030 in the morning. And after that, we will be now closing the, the session, right? So since our online distance learning, we'll just have one and a half hour to have a lecture to have a session so we'll just follow that time okay so yeah um may I ask everybody if how are you today kindly um use the chat box and tell me how are you feeling today before i'll start my discussion discussion again you may use the chat box there in your zoom account and then tell me how are you feeling today and for those who are with us in zoom or in in youtube um feel free to use the comment box and type in how are you feeling today so that we will be able to know how are you this morning Yeah, we have um, students from STEAM B. They are um, amazing, right? Um, students from STEAM J, they're good and fine. Um, students from um, STEAM 11B, um, sleepy though. Huh. Others are doing good. Um, yeah, others are still doing great for today. Okay. So, so us in YouTube, um, our other facilitators are actually monitoring you of what you are typing and commenting in the comment box. So thanks for your responses. Um, yeah, thank God that you're all great and doing good for this morning. Right, um, class, um, before I will be going to proceed the proper discussion, um, I just like to remind everybody that the, a moment. The thing that I will be discussing this morning is just only a wrap up or a short summary of what are the topics inside our module one. Take note that everything was in module one already, the learning materials, the PDF file, the supplemental resources, the videos are already there in the virtual classroom in module one. Um, the reason why we have a big class lecture 
because um, there are students who cannot come to, to school because they are fully online. Right. So we have this um, for three consecutive Wednesdays. And then um, the, the topics that was being mentioned a while ago are the topics that we will be covering for the three Wednesdays. OK, so again, um, just bear with me. I'll just give you a short recap on what are the things that was being mentioned in the module one. And then later on, um, I will um look for a student to give you know or to share some insights or to share something about um their takeaways on um module one okay so here are the sets of objectives that we will be meeting along with our discussion th this morning for module one at the end of this presentation, you should be able to first know the varied online platforms, sites, and content. Second, to understand the features of Web 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. Third is to learn the different trends in ICT and use them to your advantage. So class, um, these objectives will be part of the discussion this morning. Okay, to start with, let's first define um, what is ICT. I know for sure um, some of you are able to answer the exit ticket and maybe you already have an idea of what really ICT is. Now, the role of ICT is, um, basically to manage information and knowledge. Take note that ICT become um, the main method of communication, right? Um, we use uh, digital applications for us to communicate online. ICT also um, use for education. In education, we use technology as our mode for teaching and learning. Perhaps um, what we are doing right now is part of information and communication technology. We have flexible learning and online distance learning, right? We use this digital platforms, digital applications for collaboration and even utilize this for class presentation, right? These technologies we have right now. Another thing is business. Um, ICT and business usually, they usually have this technology for marketing. And another thing class is um, we have hospitals. We now have these um, machines and systems that made the healthcare workers, um, their work efficient, right? With the help of the machines, with the help of the system. You know, um, from manually getting the information of the patient, they now have the patient information system, right? And lastly, um, the government also. The government sector is also attaining different services, right, through online. They have their .gov domain for faster and personal business transaction. And take note class on screen are the are part of information and communication technology. This has been um, become the main method of ICT from communication, education, business, hospitals, government, and, and, and a lot of sectors. You know, ICT class makes a business or even establishment um, more efficient, more effective, and promptly, you know, respond to the needs of the customers. Now, in the in the module one, we also have here the current state of ICT. Um, it's part of the learning objectives that we have. Um, we need to tackle the th the different um, state of ICT. Right. Since um, Internet has been the vital tool in our modern lives or in today's technological era. 
which is very important to make the best um, of having an internet. So class, in this lesson, we had this topic in, in the, the module one, which is the current state of ICT that mentioned the different web stages. Now, I know for sure that you're very familiar with web one point, a moment, zero. Right. So during Web 1.0, this site is static, meaning um, sites are not interactive. Website visitors during this time can only visit the sites, but they cannot even give um, an interaction or impact to contribute to the sites. Class, the best example for Web 1.0 or the static website is um, if if you are if you if you if going back to the junior high school, um, if you're able to have ICT as your specialization, you you are required to create you know um, an, an HTML web pages. So that is static, meaning you cannot interact with it. Right. The second, um, sorry. The second one is um, Web 2.0, which is dynamic. Again, um, meaning to say, when we talk about dynamic, meaning to say it's active. This time, there is now an interaction between user itself and the website, right? Going back to the Web 1.0, it's static, meaning there's no interaction. The site is static. It's not active. Now, in Web 2.0, it's dynamic. When we talk about dynamic, it is what? It is active. Or for, um, in short, it's interactive, meaning you have an interaction between yourself to the site. Right? Um, this is the time where you can collaborate and share information online. Example for web 2.0 is blog, right? Blog, where you can put comment, where you can interact with other users, right? As long as you can interact, that is part of dynamic site or web 2.0. Now, we have 3.0 or so-called the semantic website. This is where now the artificial intelligence belong, the 3D graphics we have, right? One of the best example class for um, semantic site or web 3.0 is if you're an um, iPhone user, we have this um, Apple Siri. For those who are you know, iPhone user, you can actually relate this, right? Siri is the perfect example of where um, of web 3.0. Right, where you were able to taking computer users when their machines will not be able to communicate to each other and provide users with better results. Just speak on your phone using Siri. That is the time you're able to communicate. Right, so that's part of Web 3.0. Now we have here also the next stage, which is Web 4.0. This is considered as mobile web or symbiotic web, right? This is where we have um, personalized results, auto suggestions based on the previous search, right? Um, for example, if you go to YouTube and then you're able to search a particular topic, like for example, nursing informatics. So the moment you leave YouTube after you're searching, um, if you go back again to YouTube, you're to see the suggestions, right? That's um, auto suggestions. So, and aside from auto suggestions, we also have a machine learning that will allow users to interact more directly with the digital content. So this is the time you can share comments again and reactions to the different social media sites. And that is mobile web. So aside from mobile web, um, can, this time you're able to um, now use your phone, your mobile itself in accessing different sites, right? So knowing the different you know, um, web stages, right? From web one to three and four, um, what do you think of web web 
5.0. Yeah, it's it, you, you take note that it's skip on evolving from from different um web stages, right? So, yeah, what do you think of web 5.0? Anyone? Yeah, yes, um, Nigel. Hello, sir. Good morning. So from my perspective and understanding, sir, I think that Web 5.0 will be a more user-catered or like needs-based type of web. I think that it will be more sensitive to the behaviors and the decisions that we, the users, make online. And I think that it will cater to more of our needs. It will be more embedded in our lives and more aspects that we may or may not know of. And I think that it'll just be more ubiquitous as we experience it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks for that, Nigel. Yeah, that's correct. We also have here a direct message coming from um, Steam section E. Um, they're expecting that um, all data will be stored in a particular databases for Web 5.0. So take note, class, that um, Web um, 5.0 is still developing. Maybe during this time, Web 5.0 will now have, you know, virtual assistants that are capable in, you know, predicting users' needs by, of course, uh, studying their behavior as, as far as Nigel's um, answer um, is concerned a while ago. So that is it for the different web stages from web 1.0 to 5.0. And in the module also, we have this, um, the industrial revolution, right? We have in, um, industry one, two, three, and four. For in this, um, industry one or industrial revolution one, this is where um, the steam and water power began. I'll just um, like to reiterate this again because um, everything was in the, the, the module already. So I'll just give a short recap on how this um, revolution evolved from time to time. So later, um, the second revolution Industrial Revolution implemented already the um, electricity, right? Mass production and assembly lines. Examples um, for this is um, during Industrial Revolution or, you know, um, we have now this time the radio, airplanes, telephone, and even light bulb. Right during the second industrial revolution, these are some inventions during this era. Right on the third industrial revolution, um, this is where computers began. Right, um, we have now automation and electronics. This is also where information and communication technology. Um, establish right where when we talk about information communication technology that um, includes um, the software applications and the hardware right and now um, the fourth industrial industrial revolution is about machines replacing to humans and transforming um, manufacturing into um, integrated smart facilities that's why it's based on cyber physical system. Since we know already the different um, stages on industrial revolution from industry one, two, three, four, and take note class, we still have now another developing um, industry, which is industry 5.0. Maybe perhaps during this time, people are working with robots, um, pe people are working with smart machines during um, industry 5.0. Right. So since this is developing, um, maybe perhaps robots are helping humans work better, right? By the use of this advanced technology, such as Internet of Things. Right. So yeah. 
that is under Industry 5.0. It's not yet here on, on screen because um, since it's developing, but we already have a supplemental resources or video on Industry 5.0 in the virtual classroom. Yeah, so we have we now down to the trends in ICT. We're done discussing the different stages, the current state of ICT, the industrial revolution, even the introduction. Now let's focus on the trends in ICT in the year 2022. Now, um, class, there are actually a lot of trends in ICT we have um, now in this generation. Even um, other things was being mentioned, by the way, in the in the presentation or in the slides um, in module one. But I also included something here in my presentation. And here are the trends in ICT in the year 2022. Now we have ICT in education. We know ICT has been you know, used to improve access to education in different areas, like in remote areas. They can enable uh, to do online distance learning. They can create multimedia educational content with the use of ICT. And even perhaps um, it can also improve teacher and student interaction and enhance training in the workplace with the use of this trend. That's why in education right now, they have to, to um, integrate in their syllab syllabi the, the importance of ICT. That's why in the classroom setup, they are encouraged to use ICT, use technology, right? Because um, that is now the trend. They're, they're, um, we cannot deny the fact that we are in the technological and technological era or we are emerged with the technology. So that's ICT in education. Another thing is assistive technologies. So when we talk about assistive technologies, this can actually uh, be classified into two types, right? Um, if you are able to visit the, the materials in the classroom, there are actually personal assistive devices and adaptive assistive devices. Now, um, what is personal assistive device when we talk about assistive technology? Personal assistive device is an extension of the person's physical capacities, right? Um, example for a personal assistive device is if the person has, what, what do you call this, hearing impairment. So they need a personal assistive device such as Hearing aids, right? We have that already. And for those who cannot see um, clearly, we have um, a lot of personal assistive device, right? Another thing is, um, the second one is the adoptive assistive device. When we talk about adoptive, um, this is the, um, the this is a, actually used by, by a person with disability, although, um, usually uh, add additional cost, right? So example for this is a visually impaired person. So they need to use glasses, right? With technology enabled cameras, for example, so that they can clearly see, right? So that is adaptive assistive device. So that we have that now, we have that technology now. So that's part of the trends. Another thing is online payment. Your mobile devices, your mobile phone, smartphones, and personal digital assistants can use for making payments in other financial transactions online. In the Philippines, now we have Gcash, right? To pay for our, our order item online, right? We used to have Gcash to order something. And that is actually part of the trend. We use that for 
faster transaction. Instead of going to that particular establishment, we use Gcash, we use the um, particular application for efficient transaction. And we have that now in this year. Aside from mobile payments, we also have here digital healthcare. Hospitals and healthcare establishment has this different system to manage patients' data and information. They used to have manual recording of data before, the right? um, You write your name in the logbook, your, right? That's manual recording. Now, um, in today's generation, healthcare establishment, hospitals already have electronic health records. They put and gather all your information in a particular system, right? So, yeah, we have that in, we have actually digital um, healthcare now in different establishment, right? Um, another thing, um, other forms now for a particular hospital, um, Forms can be downloaded on, online already instead of going to the particular establishment or hospital and get the form and fill out. Um, there are actually a system or uh, a particular hospital that the form can be now downloaded online. And that is part of the trends. As we look on the different trends in this um, generation, Take note, last that the result is increasingly virtual. Take note that the, the result, um, you know, can process automation. There's a real-time operation and remote, remote workforces, right? And that is part of the trends in ICT. And lastly, in the module, we have this different online platforms and applications, right? So as you're able to, again, review our last topic for lesson one that includes online platforms and application, we have different um, platforms and applications that might be helpful to each one of you in your classes. Right. So for presentation, do not limit yourself on using PowerPoint for your presentation. You use Breezy, you use um, um, Canva for presentation. Right. And for online collaborative tools, you use Google Drive. Right. Google Docs to collaborate. And even if some of you were, were looking for a platform or a tool for, for survey in your particular research, then you use Google Form, right? Aside from distributing the, the uh, print, the questionnaire and distribute it to the respondents, it would be good if you use Google Form. And we also have here web design platforms such as um, Wix, Weebly, and another staff, right? GoDaddy. So these are the web design platforms. So you can use this um, since we are expected at the end of the, the semester, you are expected, you are all expected to create a website. So you can actually use this um, platforms right or website builders right to create your your own personal website or maybe perhaps that might be helping your business right a website for your business so these are the various online platforms and applications that might be helpful for you as a student actually class there are a lot of platforms and applications available online Okay, so yeah.
I'm actually done with the discussion. Um, it's now time for open forum or a short discussion. Maybe um, if you have question with regards to the module one, and then feel free to ask question. Yes, Lawrence. Hello, sir. I am Lawrence here. I have a lot of questions for you. What? What? And in the module I take and I took the test already. Does this relate to the topic that we have learned in? in the module one. Yes, Lau, um, some questions was actually in the presentation and I hope you're able to get it. Why was, why, was that, why was the Philippines considered to be exposed to be very developing in, in, the, in modern day technologies where it has developed the business process, business process acquisition, sir? Yeah, business processes outsourcing. So we used to have different um, agency and establishment in the Philippines. That's why it's developing country on the use of different technologies now. So, yeah. So what's the what's the difference between the first the first re industrial revolution and the second second generation revolution, second generation industrial revolution, sir? Yeah, um, it's actually in the presentation already, right? So when we talk about the first industrial revolution, um, the difference between the two is just um, the second industrial revolution is just um, being in evolved than the first industrial revolution. When we talk about second industrial revolution, um, that is where the time where airplanes, where light bulb and everything was, was begun. But what what is there is there some main idea about what how the how the third generation industrial revolution works and so yeah the thing that we have right now Lao the use of technology um, computers automation everything it's part of industrial or uh, the third industrial revolution so it so what what current what current generation we are in right now. In, in the year 2022, what kind of generation we are really uh, we are We are now in the industry 5.0, right? So that it's still developing and we are looking forward on what are the things to be part of web uh, industry 5.0. 5.0 meaning in the person, personalized generation where they, there, there was a modern day technology where there, where humans can interact with robots, just the same thing as what, the same thing as what the real humans does. Okay, according to Elon Musk, exactly. it was it is it is exactly that humans are actually underrated in the country. And how how would how would there, how would there, how would humans do the same thing for human for those robots to do something if we're in the fifth generation of technology? Yeah, that is that is correct, Lao. Um, Web 5.0 usually um, have this technology, right? Um, they're able to use this technology, the, the robots that you have mentioned, um, working as a human, right, during that time, Industry 5.0. And what what are what's the difference? What's the context here, or the difference between the third generation industrial revolution and the fourth generation industrial revolution? Okay, so everything is in the the presentation. I also gave an example a while ago, so that's very understandable. The the differences, and yeah, I hope you're able to get it well now. So in in modern in mobile technologies, does it does it, does it focus straight in does it focus straight in learning applications and stuff for mobile learning? Partly, yes, yes, now. But what's 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 what does it what does the mobile technologies more focus more on uh, aside from the technological convergence? Uh, this is the time you're able to use your mobile phone and access in different sites now. And aside from that, you're able to interact and share anything through online. So if we, and another thing we ask in, 
what in assistive media does this focus does this also focus on technologies that are useful for people with mental disabilities um it's for yeah it's it's that's assistive so there are actually a lot of um assistive media uh, assistive technology we have right now so that might be helpful for them right i think there are yes. questions in in the the youtube channel what is that um question if so if i know already about the trends of technology but is there is there similarities between mobile technologies and uh, technological conversions? Yeah, um, they are actually um, put in one right now because the technology, the mobile technology, are now being converged so that that is why um your yeah your phone can now be a camera or watch mga wearable technologies or yeah Sige. um this time i also want to acknowledge some questions from the other class i think we have question in the youtube and in my private message or direct message here in zoom um, since we are also considering other students to accommodate their question in the forum. Um, the question is, is GCAS uh, safe, right? So um, based on experience, I used to have GCAS for um, my transaction, even if, um, if I buy, you know, something, food online and everything. So for me, um, it's actually safe as long as you're not able to um, share your information to someone else, right? Um, just make it sure that all of your information, um, you will just know that by yourself. Do not share any um, information to someone else, right? So that your information in, in your Gcash account is you know um, safe. So, sir, I have last. I have a last question. In the in 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 our generation, which is which is the generation Z the generation alpha generation, which is between, somewhere between 2005 and 2020, what is, the what, is the most, what is the most common trend that we have right now in, during the 20, the, 20 the, the, the second decade of, of the 21st century? Is it more on relying more on social media and rather than anything else as, as young kids as us? <laughs> Sigir, what others what others um think about it? Um, of course, um, all of us are really inclined with social media, right? So, all of us used to have different social networking accounts that might be helpful for us to communicate and even use this for online classes. So, yeah. So. Therefore, as, as they grow, as they amount, as we move on, there will be, so it is, a, is it a possibility that there will be new generations of the industrial revolutions that could, that could uh, improve the personalization of our society, right, sir? Yeah, exactly, Lao. So we have here another question from the chat box. Will Duma get the city eventually become dependent to mobile payment or will it be take a couple more years to do so due to the immense small establishment in the city? Right in the current um, situation right now in the city, there are actually some establishment that will cater mobile payment and others don't have this right so um hopefully in the couple years um some will be immersed and used to have uh, mobile payment now nah. and we're hoping for that and another question can someone 
or somehow break into where the personal data of the clients are stored sir for for gcash a moment so sir and other question again so what what in the so technology starting started in europe and america right in in the first in the first gen, in the first generation in in the term in the term in the, the industrial revolution what does pain stockingly mean what's that again lao in the industrial revolution section of module one, I, I as I was reading, goods that had once been painstakingly crafted by hand started to be produced in mass quantities by machines in factories. Thanks to the introduction of new machines and techno the techniques in textiles, iron making, and other industries. What does the word painstakingly mean? Does this mean that it it might have so much time into to, into creating in, new innovations in in the modern day technologies and stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's actually um, a form of preparation. And and I was say, as I was saying there, what are in in the picture that shows three tables of new role of the roles in in technology? What the what do what do this what do this mean? What do this what does the stable roles, the new roles, the, and the redundant roles really mean, sir? Um, it's actually since technology, I keep on saying this to everybody, the technology is um, it keep on evolving. So from time to time, our um, generation or industry has this technological, um, you know, um, convergence and and it kept on it keeps on, you know, evolving from time to time. So as as I was saying, since social media what was the most common trend that we have in Dumaguete City, the, it, which it, which I find it out, does does it also evolve into new forms rather than the most popular ones such as Facebook and Twitter? Yeah, um, it doesn't mean that you cannot you, you were not able to use different um social networking side, right? So. It will depends upon you as a user, actually, on what um, social media platforms would you like to use to to communicate. Okay, so this time I also again um, encourage um, asking someone else, especially for the other section to with regards to the the discussion. Um, I think we have here, Mom Lisa. Uh, yes, good morning, everyone. I also would like to address the questions we have in YouTube. Um, Win 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 is asking, or no, Sean is asking if cryptocurrency is considered safe. Now, who among you here is familiar or knows the word cryptocurrency? Can I get a virtual thumbs up, please? Cryptocurrency. Anyone? Virtual thumbs up. Yes. For those who, who knows cryptocurrency or are familiar with it, can you put in uh, your thought about whether it is safe or not? You can either say safe or not in the chat box. And to those who are also in uh, YouTube. Ano lang? Safe and not lang ang answer niyo. Again, for those who know what cryptocurrency is. So while you're while you're typing it down, I'll also go to the next question here we have in YouTube. Uh, it's quite similar. Uh, it's a uh, uh, Jose. It's quite similar about um, uh, payment method. So we are now on that. <clears throat> I think it's on our development phase. Most of our, especially here in Dumaguete, are we going to get rid of physical methods of payment like cash entirely and move on to digital? Uh, I think this is now the future of paying. Um, some some countries are already doing this, just like China. 
um, they're they're no longer like holding cash, like the physical cash. They're just using one application. I think, um, oh gosh, I forgot the application. That's where if if it's in our country, it's like GCash or PayMaya. They they also have their their own there. So they pay uh, through through this digital money uh, wherever they go, uh, taxi, um, paying in a restaurant, buying their uh, stuff, it's all uh, online payment. So I, I would like to see our country progressing into that. Um, I hope you're agreeable also, or you can also see a future that will no longer be um, using the physical money. Sir Jade also says coins the pH. Maybe you can uh, add more to that, Sir Jade. Hi, good morning, uh, Ma'am Liz. Yeah, in terms of uh, cryptocurrency, uh, in terms of the question that is it safe or uh, not, I would say it is because uh, the technology involves in cryptocurrency, mostly uh, they are based on blockchain technology and blockchain, as we all know, it's a very safe technology. Thank you, Sir Jay, for giving us your input to that as well. I think we also had other questions here in YouTube. Um, I think that's it. It's more on Gcash. Na mga Gcash ni mo sir, sir, sir John. I also have a question here in the chat box. Is Notion that can considered as application that can use a personal website? Yes, it's um can considered to be part of WhatsApp Builder. Yeah. Um. For those who have question in the the direct message, um, I'm actually replying you from time to time, right? Okay. Um. From Rene. With the prog this is in YouTube, with the progressive technology in our country, specifically in education, what modification can we expect from this development? Um, perhaps you're, you're pertaining to how, how education will be, Rene? Well, if it's for education now, uh, slowly, of course, especially private institution, not more on the, on the public, in education uh, slowly more, more um a lot of private institutions are are now getting into uh digital education or ha um putting in platforms for for uh, online education specifically uh, um basically now that our like we have a lot of like maybe virus viruses coming in and we can take that um scenario again where everyone everything is put on hold so especially in education that yeah, like like us in Silliman University the, this platform my soul will be uh, a staple it, it will stay here even if let's say uh, we are going back to the normal things of doing but I don't think it's going in that direction so online will be here to stay and I hope the other like the, the public um what do we call the public chat that will also adapt to online education. So it's all already progressing in that way. And how we also handle education, see uh, see our our current state right now. Even if you go uh, face to face, you, we, we most of our teachers are also uh, still adapting the online uh, platform. So the language child will no longer going back to what it was before. Yeah, thanks for that, Mom Lise. Um, this time, um, I st we still have 30 minutes. And then right after that, um, I prepared here a short activity. So yeah. I want you to scan the QR code or maybe perhaps I'll be sharing you the 
the link in the chat box for you to access the activity. Okay, a moment. Again, um, scan your scan the QR code, and I will be pasting again the link in the chat box. Yeah, I already have the link in the chat box. Kindly feel free to click on the link so that you will be um, redirected to the platform. Sir, the, there is no active question yet, sir. As the link says. I will okay, I'll publish it later now. Okay. Others are still accessing it. Okay, others are already in a moment. I'll stop my sharing so that I will be you now sharing the um, empty here. So considering that um, you already know more about what we have discussed a while ago in, in ICT and beyond ICT, um, Okay, so yeah, again, considering that we already have discussed um, what is ICT and how ICT work. Now, the question is, um, in the Minty, how do you describe ICT in your everyday life? I think you need to um, indicate at least two uh, answers on the question, and we'll see what is the most... Um, um, number of answer here so that will be flash on screen so I am still waiting for the others to um, visit the link and have your answer here so far the most visible one is helpful um, convenient useful Yeah, there are 61, 64 of the class was already accessing the link and I am still hoping that we will be, um, you know, beyond uh, two, 100 plus or 200 perhaps to put your answer and we'll see what's the biggest word in the on, in sc on screen. Others are saying, Innovative, how do you describe ICT in your everyday life? It's innovative, it's convenient for them, it's necessary, it's beneficial. Others also say um, it, it's challenging, right? It's essential, um, it's crucial for communication. It's vital, exactly. And still on the list are useful, helpful, convenient. We also have here significant. I'm actually reading the small um, text here. Um, wait, high technology that describes your everyday life. Um, we have handy, effective, It's 
still on the list, we have helpful, useful, convenient as the top three um, most answered um, word. We have what else? Amazing, interactive, a good facility. Others answer here, uh, programming. Connection, informative, coding, it makes life easier. What else? Um, there are already 268, and I think that completes the... Yeah, I am. I, I think there are still students in uh, watching us in YouTube who are still answering the question. So we'll wait for them and we'll see what's the. It's already 280 of you. And then the most answered word and how they describe ICT in their daily life is it is helpful, convenient again, essential, useful necessary, beneficial. Now this time, um, aside from knowing your answer in the in this question, I'd like to ask at least um, five representatives to give um, their insights on the discussion today about information and communication technology. Sige, um, may I ask someone to give a short insight um, about our discussion today? May I have um, Jeline? Is Jeline here? Um, feel free to unmute yourself if you wish to give a short insight on what you have learned so far in the discussion this morning. Sir, should I have a go on, on sharing to you my short insight about our discussion? Yes, Lau. Go ahead. So here is my short insight about our discussion. We all learned that ICT can be very helpful, very useful. It's a easy, it's a e all technology where all technologies are really easy to use, despite all the challenges we have in the very past. Until we see we see the first generation of uh, in the, the industrial revolution, we are all we all know that it what it's it can it can help us not exhaust us from human human and horsepower since we since we we have faced those challenges. Even through even through the old times, and now in, in the newer generation, it could make our it could make our lives also easy that we can in we can um send through, like in if we try to send out communicate communications or research information. That's how I could tell that it was based on research, but you can but it there was also there was also a secret technology that can. That I could tell in reality is through mental, men, using a mental thinking abilities. But if if none of them ha doesn't have it, 
they they can use they can use any for any any easy to use technology such as using a calculator and stuff and or a computer that but they that Google Google searches any information that they, over there. So as what I could say is if if we if we have the ICT that we learn from now, it could it could also make us more personalized to through um mother mother into future generations of future generations of the in of technological innovations and also how the trends will improve as much, such as how social media can can uh, make us easier without causing any more disturbance in in uh, in in friends with with you or any assistive use of technology stuck to the help people who have any forms of disabilities either physical or mental or sense sense senses as 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 I, as I can end this up we could say the ICT can make, make can make our lives easier and and the more generations we we have there the more complex it really is not, or it will be easier for us to um, fulfill those um, innovations of technology in the future generations. Thank you. Yeah, that wraps up everything. Thanks, Lau. Um, I also want to hear from student coming from STEAM section C. Let's have here Queenie. Sir, what was the question again, sir? Um, you may share any insights what, um, on what you have learned for today's discussion about ICT. Uh, um, Yeah, by the way, for those who are in YouTube, your insights is recognized. Thank you. I think um, students from STEAM 11 uh, U, Valerie, would like to share something about the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have learned that ICT has made significant contributions, especially for our world today. And um, since we're going through online distance learning, I believe that social media such as Seoul could be beneficial, sir. And um, especially to people who have limited opportunities due to disabilities, I think that having ICT in our everyday lives can be useful and convenient, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that, um, Val. And this time we have another representative from STEAM 11B, Nigel, go ahead. Hello, sir, everyone. Good morning again. So for me, what I learned from our module today was that ICT is really something important in our everyday lives. It's something that at this point we can't live without. We go to school with ICT, we work, we use social media, we shop with ICT, and ICT has come so far to the point that it accommodates all kinds of people, whether you have disabilities, visual impairments, if you have any other um, incapacities, you can still use ICT, and ICT still, in a way, makes your life more convenient, and I think that goes true for all of us, and I think I speak for everyone when I say that the questions and the thoughts raised in this discussion, especially by Lawrence, are they're much appreciated because we were really able to be exposed to a diverse range of thoughts and we were able to learn about concepts that are outside of our lesson, like how Lawrence opened up about cryptocurrency and Elon Musk's um, technological advancements and technological convergence. So I think that this discussion was very eye-opening and it sets a very strong foundation for our MTech education this semester. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's actually a great insights, Nigel. This time I'd like to hear again uh, from Noreen Marshall.
Okay, if Noreen is not her around, um, let's have... Okay, uh, um, okay. <laughs> sorry, sir, there was a little mal malfunction in my mute button. Um, so I want to keep it uh, straight to the point that I think ICT is very important in our lives because, as, because back then, uh, since technology isn't that much advanced in this er era, um, ICT, ha ICT uh, technologies have become more advanced and more used in this era because of many possibilities. So yeah, it, so yeah, I think it is very life changing, and hopefully in the future, um, it would give us more opportunities to help each other and more. Yeah, thanks for that, Noreen. Um, that would also help us, right, in today's setup, especially we are in online distance learning. Um, this time, let's hear from um, Nika of STEAM 11H. Nick? Yeah, can't hear you, Nick. Yeah, by the way, while well, waiting for Nika, for those who are with us in YouTube, um, feel free to share your insights because um, teacher Lisa and Sir Jade is actually monitoring your insights, your answer in YouTube. And we'll also be replying on mm -hmm. your answer. Yes, Nick, go ahead, Nick. Okay, so hi guys, um, I am Nika from Steam Age. Given today's time, we are surrounded by technology that has greatly evolved. In this high-tech world, every day is a step for advancement. And every day is a step for advancement, and I have learned how it is essential to adapt with the change. The course empowerment technology best fits the improvement I yearn, or perhaps we yearn. And so alongside with that, I also expect it to be the bridge for my betterment in this highly computerized generation. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you're able to use the different lessons or topics we had right now. Okay, we have, um, I think Lawrence again would like to share something before we end the session. Good day, everyone. My name is Lorenzo Catello, and here is my last short, short, my last insight about what we discussed. According to most students, it, it was there to use advancements, and we it was used for any any adaptations that we use in the modern modern day future. And with and then with and with that idea, I, it it could be a, it could be many things, like trying to uh, trying to uh, adjust the convergence of new innovations of technologies or. It will it will be to re resolve each um, each kind of error that we that what the society will see. First is the convergence of the, the convergence of uh, modern day technologies. In in the in the in the second or third generations, they they have invented iron iron made technologies such as and also uh, electromagnetic radiation technologies such as in social, such as using laptops, computers. Um, electric fans, airplanes, and many more. And we thought they, with those um, new and with those in original inventions, they could also be, it will cycle the, it will cycle the, um, it will cycle the convert, the convergence of new innovations of technologies. Like for example, when you see an iPad, sixth generation, and, and when, and as time converges, you can see an iPad Pro. You, that, that means there will be new, uh, new features that could, give them more personalization for each individual in the society. And also in regards to the word convergence, it really means trying to um trying to merge new trying to merge raw ideas on how can technology really works and then trying to form them into some sort of a combination of a new in invention that can be created in the modern day technology era. Next one is the advance it's the advancement of the, the, the use of technology. I feel like how did there are questions there. 
how would they how would be, they will be advanced and adjusted in in the future generations first of all it was it was because of how it was because of the errors that i have seen in in trying to invent something in the modern day in the modern day lives such as when such as all the inventions of from from Elon Musk from Tesla when when they see a car that could that could that could be bulletproof they could they they should try to do some experiments and resolve some mis, resolve some errors in there just to make it more adjusted and beneficial for the next for the next years of generations such as in the third, third decade of the 21st century with that with these adjustments they could make our lives easier and it could make future generations easier to to um overcome those challenges that that happen in the in right, right now such as the covid-19 pandemic how will that how will they use mtech in in resolving vaccinations and how will they use some um, modern technologies in, in using chemicals and trying to um, uh, re, to prevent the virus and how will they um make factories that could make, that could easily use face masks as as if it was found in the first or the second generation of it and if we if we encounter these errors there will there were there were there were tendencies that they could be readjusted and re, re reworked if, if even if there were bad negative feedbacks about how technology really is so and and the last insight we have here is how is the is the way we can make our life easier through information and communications communications one of the most common things that we have on on our life we have a voice we have a, we have ears and senses and everything that we can process the information through we can interpret the information into our own meanings but without but at first it was a limitation we all we have to do is do some face to face um face to face communication contact with each other and now with with, with the modern day technologies there there was some there was a, there was an easier life right there such as websites that are static at first from the web 1.0 and until until now they, they are using research using social media that could um, express how, express those information on on the on the whole world and that's where there was the in, there was the innovation of google here and for the technologies it was also it also, it also inter, it relates with the um, with the google that we have that we have here could be the result of um of the our fourth generation life here the fourth generation i mean it was all the things that we made in in what we have invented right now in what like wifi and such that it could be found in the third generation such as how the prompters the the laptops the the chargers that we have here and also and also power plants that we have in in the, in the salt power plants that we have such as um Solar power, solar solar panels, and the Noreca Noreca electricities. So what I can tell is technology is communication, regardless of how, regardless of what why they expect to make this um useful in in the modern day futures, they can also be adapted. Uh, each generation can also be adapted as well, improved, adapted, and whatsoever. As and therefore, I could I could tell the proof that. If there was technology, if there was advancements, if there was adjustments, they could also adjust in the future generations. As if there were errors in the, in the mod, as if there were errors in how they experiment things, or if or they could uh, or if there was some easier method, or they could inv invent new ideas on how to make our how to make direct communication really easier for us without causing this, without causing any more disturbance in in the in the modern day society. As was again, it could make. It, technologies can ICT can shows us the nature of how technologies function and how we use it in uh, in the in our in our personal life, such as in, while we're in work or in school, or how we use mobile mobile technologies in a fulfilling um, portable 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 entertainment in in most in most generations. As, as if we can learn th through this or that. So after all. I, as I could say is it could if we have technology it could make it could it could make us easier for all the things that people have in mind such as challenges and many more thank you for listening sir
Yeah, that summarizes everything from introduction to trends to industrial revolution to online platforms and application. Right. So everything was being concluded by Lawrence today. So that's a great sharing, Lao. Um, yeah, I'll stop share my my screen and I'll share it another screen for final announcement. Yeah. So by the way, um, that is all for the discussion and lecture this morning. All of your insights, questions was very helpful to, to each one of us in this session. And I am also um, inviting everybody again for the next session, which is next Wednesday for module two, which will be delivered by um, Miss Oriel Lisa Maipa, and she will be um, tackling more on the collaborative development and online collaboration tools. So that's for module two. And for module three, um, for online safety and security and online research that will be delivered by Mr. Jade Montemayor. So please keep in touch with the links, the announcement and everything, right? Because the whole, um, these um, three consecutive ones, they will be using that for um, online lecture and discussion where all of your concerns, questions should be addressed during um, that time with regards to the module. Class, thank you so much for being with us in this um, first big class lecture. I hope you're able to learn something about the introduction to ICT. Thank you once again. Are there any announcements, Mom Lisa and Sir Jade, from your end? Um, wait, uh, because someone's asking if Bawal Doma Classy, um, a Wednesday. Yes, but we've already asked permission from our principal and that they've already agreed to this. And if Pwede Bawal Doma Classy rata sa atong designated time, yes, Pwede Kaayu, but take note that again, uh, like Sir John and I have 10 uh handling 10 sections and just imagine us saying the same thing from 8.30 to 5.30. So we will feel like robots by the end of 5.30. So that's why we are having this big lecture. I hope you understand. This is only just three Wednesdays. So thank you again. That's it for my part. Um, none in my answer, Jen, on this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you once again, class. That is all. Stay safe and see you in the next um, big lecture. Take care and God bless everybody. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. I hope I have learned everything okay. from what I've learned from last from I the love last you, time. Lauren. Oh, goodbye, sir. Bye, thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, teachers. Uh, thank you. I had a fun discussion. Bye, sir. Bye, everyone.